Welcome to another episode of Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast for people who destroyed their computer with LimeWire. Well, hey, welcome back, everybody. This is your guy, Dave, here to share another episode of Six Picks Music Club with you. And with me are my two favorite dudes, Jeffro. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> and Russ. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Why do people stop at three yo's? You can do more. There's so many options. It's a free fucking country. Well, once again, this is Six Picks Music Club, a music podcast where each episode we pick two songs around a central theme and discuss. And our theme today is From Me to You, songs that we have each picked out for the other two hosts, kind of based on, I did what I thought you guys would like. I don't know what you guys did. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, I thought that was the assignment. Yeah, I guess one approach would be to just hate pick for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, because I don't really know what's going on most of the time. But I do know that this up we've got a brand new segment where we actually talk to someone in one of the bands that we've picked. Spoiler alert, Russ picked a song by a band called I Am Dynamite. It's all one word. And the drummer slash vocalist Chris Phillips is going to join us later in the episode to talk about the song, the band, and what's on the horizon for them. Yeah, dude. I Am Dynamite is a super cool band, and Chris Phillips is a great guy. I'm excited for everybody to meet him and learn about this band. On a side note, the full interview will be available as bonus content, so look out for that too. Well, here we are talking all about it. We had, we don't even have the doors open. We're, we're just standing outside in the, in the cold, in the rain. We need a password to get the lock off the door. What's our password this week, boys? Gravy train, gravy boat, gravy car? <laughs> <laughs> gravy car. Yeah, let's drive it till the wheels fall off, man. Everybody, get inside. Get inside this clubhouse. Here we go. Find your spot. Squeeze in. Thanks, listener, for joining us again. We have a really fun, fun episode today. Now that we've done a couple of these and we have some ideas about how the other guys pick, we thought it would be fun to kind of see what else we can find for them. So that's our episode today. Because my eldest daughter is turning 10 on Saturday, and the whole birthday thing with kids is a little crazy that I didn't I didn't really know about it when I didn't have kids. And so I would go to parties for other parents, other friends who had kids, and, you know, you get them the gifts and things. And now as a parent, I've learned so much about what is a good gift to give a kid. And it's so much about giving gifts to the family as it is to that one kid. I have a little bit of a list of things that are bad gifts to give to kids and not to bring. But I also think there could be good bad gifts if you don't like the kid or the parents. More hate picks. I think number one on my my gift to not bring is anything that's alive, anything that's living, like a hamster, <laughs> a fish, <laughs> any animal, right out. What's in the box? Why does it have holes in it? <laughs> well, yeah, a, a live thing that has since died... <laughs> <laughs> also bad, also bad. And this also includes plants. I think plants are a really bad idea. And I know grown 40-year-olds that cannot keep a plant alive. And I don't know why you expect that a 10-year-old will be able to do it. They won't and they can't. You may get a couple of weeks. You might get a month out of that. But then that plant is either going to die or it's going to become your responsibility as the parent. And then you have a plant. And I'm guilty of this because I gave my, my now wife a sweet puppy dog for her birthday. And Shelby was a great dog, and we loved her her whole life. She was our first baby. But my wife, my then girlfriend, fiance, at the time, she had a cat named Kitty, like like the band. And Kitty did not like Shelby. Kitty started shitting on my wife's pillow to show her dissatisfaction with the situation. <laughs> That's so gross. Cats are butt-centric. You know, like they're just sort of rubbing their butt on everything. They also do that when uh -huh. they like you. I just, God, cats. <laughs> I have cats, but... Yeah, I have a cat now that really likes to wake me up and say, hey, check out my butthole. Let me know. Yeah. What do you think today? What's the story with that? Well, anyway, so Kitty ultimately went to live with my wife's mom and then got out and ran away and we never saw her again. That's what the mom told you, but mom was like, get rid of this fucking cat <laughs> once and for all. She's like, well, the cat ran away, but come on over for... Uh... 
some meat stew. Oh, no. What happened to her old cat? Oh, you mean pillow shitter? Yeah, she's cooking in the crock pot right now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, all the living things that you gift to people, they become that person's responsibility. Like, I gotta water this damn ficus tree every three days or it gets upset. Vet bills, animal food, emotional anguish when they ultimately die before us, or they outlive us and then eat our eyes before our corpses are found. It's just a bad idea, so don't bring anything that's living. Number two on the do not bring to gift to my child or anyone in my house is kinetic sand. (laughs) (laughs) Never ever. You are a monster. Your kid will not be friends with my kid anymore. You will have lost all respect for me as a human being, and your kid won't get to take a goodie bag home from the party when you leave. So last thing that I have on my list is toys that make noise. There's a little bit of a gray area here. Like if you already play the trumpet and you're getting a new or better trumpet or something, I guess that's okay. My kid does not know how to play the accordion. Do not get her a freaking accordion. What about a squeeze box? Are they the same or? Very similar. I guess fewer notes on the squeeze box, but. I heard that mama had a squeeze box and daddy never (laughs) sleeps at night. And that's the lamest sexual innuendo in the history of rock lyrics. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, she's out there doing doing Kegels all day long, getting that squeeze box nice and tight. Okay, basically, if it requires batteries, just find something else. Literally, a gift card to Olive Garden Diarrhea would be preferable. A goddamn Tamagotchi? Hell no. This is not 1994. Okay, so other quick note, batteries. Okay, so yeah. I have two boys. We We all have kids. There's so many batteries now and you're not supposed to just throw them in the trash because then the alkaline gets in the water and then i guess people die of battery i I don't really know what happens but you're not (laughs) supposed to do it but what do you do with them man we had just bags of batteries i know get renewable ones but the renewable ones you got to charge all the time i'm talking we have at least 12 to 15 toys that require two or more batteries I'll just say that we always have batteries of every size, and I haven't ever had that in my house until I lived lived with my with my lady. <laughs> You're making insinuations. We have double A's, we have triple A's, mm. we have C batteries, we have D batteries, we have nine volts. And she's like, "Hey, honey, I think I think this is a D battery night." And you're like, oh, no, (laughs) my butt is going to get stretched. (laughs) So our topic, again, is is from me to you, and it's songs that we picked for each other, songs that we think the other people are going to like. And I think for this, we should go person by person. Like, let's start with the picks that me and Russ made for Jeff. Oh. And then you guys can go for whoever, you know, the songs y'all pick for me. And then and then we'll we'll finish off with the songs we got for Russ. What do y'all think about that? A dig. That's cool with me. Cool, cool, cool. Well, Jeff, you're on. I'm on the hot seat. You're in the hot seat. And mine have a little bit of a theme this week. And uh, that theme is Nashville. It's a city that I lived in for just a, just a year, but had such a blast that year that we did live there and got to see some really great music and experience a completely different kind of music town than Austin is. And anyway, both of the bands that I've got tonight are, are bands from that rock scene. And this first band for Jeff is a band called Diarrhea Planet. And the track is from their 2013 album, I'm Rich Beyond Your Wildest Dreams. And the track is called Light Dream. So I saw this band at the Troubadour in Los Angeles when I lived out in California, and they blew the freaking doors off of the place. It was the wildest and craziest rock show that I had seen in a long, long time. And I picked this one for Jeffro because I feel like I've recommended this band to you on multiple occasions. And each time I get met with, I'm not listening to a band called Diarrhea Planet. I haven't said that. Have I said that? You have literally said those words. And now all of the the poop talk that we get into these days is just like, I'm so awestruck by like, how is that a thing? Why is this a barrier that's that's keeping this band from you? Because I don't feel like I've ever, I feel like you've, you've made that a mental construct. That represents our distance. He's a gaslighter. I am not He's gaslighting you, constructing or embellishing anything. This is these are 
facts and and I have I have receipts. Hmm. But this is high octane rock and roll. And I thought you were going to love it. So I I insisted on playing the lead track off of this record, which is their second album. Do you want me to break down what I like about it first? Do you want to give me like your... Well, I know. This is about me, isn't it? Why are you talking the whole time and telling me what I didn't do right? No, this is you're trying to please me (laughs) and I will respond. (laughs) All right. Respond then. Tell me what you think. My interpretation of the song is I'm drinking a blue sugar-free monster energy and I'm playing racquetball. It's like three and a half minutes and like I'm gassed after it's over with. Like if their whole catalog is like this, I'm going to be very tired after this show. It is high octane. I'm excited. I do want to rock. Other things that it has that I like. It starts with a guitar solo. I love that. I love it when when songs are like kind of introing and it's just like <laughs> like right at the beginning. <laughs> like don't fuck around. Just just go right into it. Right. I like the vocal aesthetic of this dude. I like the way he sings. I like that there's parts of it where they're like noodling and shredding and it's on the back of the track. It's on the bottom while the like the mm-hmm. bass and the rhythms on top. So it's not like featuring the guitar soloing. It's just like going on under it all. Which which is great. I like the tempo change after two minutes. I love songs that have tempo changes in them. So I don't know if you knew that, but that was good. And I also like it in songs when there's a false ending, when I've been getting rocked and then it's like, oh, it's over. And then I get rocked again. No, it's not. Yeah. We're coming back for more. <laughs> so I like this song. I give this, I give this song a, I approve. <laughs> yes. But it's a, it's a little scattered. It feels like, it feels like they had three different songs and they didn't really know where any of them were going, and they just kind of, like, smashed them all together, which is fine because they were just like, just play it fast and fuck it. (laughs) At the end of the song, they're just, like, trying to squeeze in as much shit as they had just, like, right before it ends. It's just like... And which is also fine, but it doesn't like your mom's here. I gotta finish it. Your mom's yeah, finish here. Finish it. it quickly. Finish this song. The song doesn't really have a singular message or know what it is, you know, which which prevents it from being great to me. Hmm. You know, I want to communicate with my music, but that's maybe not what the purpose of this is. The purpose of this is to drink your energy drink, take a shot of vodka, and go jump into a crowd of people. The band will literally jump jump off stage and mosh with the audience as they're playing the show. The opening lyric, heavy metal rotting out my brain. Yeah. The uh, songwriter, guitar player, Jordan Smith, says that this song is about a dude melding reality with the animated film Heavy Metal. Have you seen that movie? (laughs) I haven't seen it, but I know what it is. So he was obsessed with that movie in college, and for a whole summer, he would just get stoned and watch it every day. So That's awesome. (laughs) That's what the song's about. It's kind of that process of getting melded there. These guys were literally climbing from the rafters, and their whole setup it's a six-piece band they have four guitarists and then a bass player and a drummer so when you hear all of those different noodlings and all those things those are all different dudes four guitarists when they recorded this record they recorded live tracks oh wow this is how they played it they're like influenced by hendrix the stones docking acdc they did it in eight days. Russ was trying to talk for like five minutes, Dave. What, what, what did you have to say, Russ? I just want to say I really love this song and I kind of wish you'd picked it for me. Ooh, jealousy. Ooh. Yeah, I'm jealous. Oh, man, hey, I'm jealous. jealousy. This is definitely going on a playlist. Yeah, I'm going to continue listening to Diarrhea Planet. This does get the Jeffro stamp of approval. Is it a home run? No, it's like a double. That's all right. We got a hit. It's still a hit. And a double is great. You got ducks on the pond there. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah. This week, I uh, I picked two-piece bands. Jeff, I have a Canadian band for you. Oh. Because I know how much you like to be represented by your people. <laughs> the song is What's It Take to Be Happy by the Blue Stones off their 2022 album, Pretty Monster. That's a fun one. I, I have some ideas of where I see that fits in with, with Frodo. I feel like there's like a good party vibe to it. Jeffro was a, a notorious host of kick-ass parties that always had good tunes and lively atmosphere. And I could totally see this one being on a party playlist that's just like a raucous, wild good time. What a tremendous compliment. That is just such a nice thing to hear. Well. I'm not even being sarcastic. Like I... <laughs> 
You can't tell these days. <laughs> I know. I do like to think that I was a house party thrower and still like hosting people and trying to make them have a good time. You don't often get co- complimented for that. It's just something that is, you know. So I appreciate that. So this song is laid back and easy. I feel like it could echo other artists you've chosen in the past. Yeah. The guitarist and lead vocalist, Tarek Jafar, had this to say about the song. This song is in a major key, which is different for us. I took a whimsical approach to the lyrics and the composition of the song. It's about this endless search for what's going to make you happy. You're told the grass is greener, and there's a certain element of success that you need to achieve. And after a while, it's just exhausting. The song is about that chase, and it's also about that final moment where you give up on all that superficial stuff and just carve out your own path. So that resonates with me as a middle-aged nobody. Okay. Sure, I'll never be that underwear model that I wanted to be since I was a kid, but there's always OnlyFans, right? (laughs) (laughs) But seriously, it's a good position to operate from. This is a band that's starting to see some real success. Their albums are getting nominated, they're turning heads in the industry, and with each album their confidence is building. It's cool because as they've become more known, they work even harder to not lose who they are as musicians. And I respect that. In the pros column, this song is hooky. It's catchy as fuck. I place a high premium on catchiness in songs. I like pop songs, but I also like songs we wouldn't consider pop, but are catchy and especially start to like the song more when it does this little space noises i don't know how you make those sounds where it's like (laughs) in the background you know what i mean it's like in the first chorus it starts and then also it's bringing in sweet bass riffs that are fuzzy so i like i i've always been a big fan of fuzzy bass right I also like the lyrical messages that are being transmitted, like, we should just quit and be happy. I could get on board with that. I should just quit and be happy. There's a girl at Arizona State, a notorious party school, speaking of parties. We're going to go see what she's all about. And the last line is good. He woke up in a Cadillac and he went back to sleep because there's nothing wrong with that. It was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. It stuck with me. Yeah. Yeah. So in the cons column for me, I did sign up to be rich and famous. So he said that he didn't. I don't agree. (sighs) This is hard because this is just out of everybody's control. But I just don't like this vocal aesthetic very much. Do you know? It's like I I would put it in the I would put it in the same bin as like Jack Johnson and Ben Harper. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my thing. I was picking up some G Love special sauce. G Love, that's exactly, dude. G Love is a brilliant musician. I will never even challenge that. But that vocal aesthetic that he does, I just don't dig it. I don't know what it is about that. Thanks, guys. This is great. Thanks, Jeff. I think it's it's time for us to send some picks Russ's way. You want to take the lead? This is a group I got introduced to but months ago. They're new to me as well. They're an Australian punk band that is headed by Amy Taylor. They are Amel in the Sniffers. Amel is short for the chemical that's in poppers, which you use to make your orgasms more pronounced. Very popular in the New Orleans gay community, which I'm personally familiar with. So that's what it is. You're sniffing ammo and getting your pops off. And I think that sizes up the kind of sound we got here. (laughs) Talk about Amped Up. Here we go. This is Guided by Angels. Dude, Amy Taylor is a force. I don't know if you guys have ever seen her live. I almost saw her at a show in October. I couldn't make it, but I've seen videos of her life. I haven't seen her yet, but I can hear what she would be like, and I look forward to seeing it. She walks around. She's just fucking punching everything. She looks like she wants to, I like... I bet she's just bouncing around on stage, going nuts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah she's yeah. ferocious. So you know them already. I know the band. I know the first album. I, I hadn't made it to the second album. Sounds like she has a lot of energy. It's her currency. (laughs) She's got plenty of it. I think that would be a super fun show to go to. So I chose this because I think of your aesthetic as being a punk. You're you're a punk deep down. Maybe not even deep down. It's there. You like punk and punk folk. And I just went with 
straight up punk. And yeah. this song just really gets my my personal rocks off. I like it when that guitar part comes in. It's just like like i i really get going yes they did name themselves after amo poppers right but she said you sniff it and it lasts for 30 seconds and then you have a headache and that's what we're like (laughs) (laughs) which is awesome that's genius it was great i hadn't heard the song but i latched onto it immediately i thought it was really fun you can hear the energy and they look youthful like Got like a, a no fucks given attitude, which is cool. Yeah, right. Like, you know, very, very punk. There's something about bands from Australia that are just, they feel so high energy. Mm-hmm. Was it Wolf Mother? Are they from Australia too? Yeah. Tame Impala. Tame Impala. The Living End. Yeah. The Greats is another band that I saw at South by. They were almost on my on my festival list last week or whatever. And yeah, it's just high energy. Like, I don't know, something in the water down there venom it's just like there's so many poisonous animals they're just drinking venom it gives them extra rock power so well done did you guys see the email from dixie earlier about the new ad sponsor no missed it oh did it come in today i i missed it i don't think i saw it you didn't okay well she's been doing a lot of work behind the scenes thank you dixie always the best but we have a new sponsor that is thinking about sponsoring one of the segments. Yeah. I'll just I'll just give it a read and you guys tell me if you think this is something that fits for our show. Are you tired of seeing the remnant skids in your shorts come laundry day? Are you and your partner exploring some new areas in the bedroom? Or do you just have a hard time waking up in the morning? If you answered yes to any or all of these questions, we recommend you try Bidet, the eco-friendly solution to all of life's problems. With just a quick 10-minute install, you'll be on your way to sitting on a refreshingly clean backside. A convenient turn of a knob and you'll experience a cool spray of delight across one of the more sensitive spots on your body. The powerful stream of the bidet spray will shine your hole better than a pressure washer on dirty concrete. Experience the satisfaction you get from your favorite cleaning videos on TikTok while you tickle your taint with a watery rim job. Say goodbye to embarrassing underwear and say hello to your future self who's nailing that presentation in front of the boss with confidence. No more disapproving looks from your proctologist. Order now and enter the code SIXPIX to buy one, get one free, and be the host with the most, impressing your guests with a European flair. You owe it to yourself to try Bidet. Today. Today. Bidet. Yeah. Dixie, I think that's a that's a great sponsor. I'm really hoping they sign on. I'll just say from personal experience, the Bidet is a life changer. It has reduced our toilet paper consumption by half. I lobbied for one, and partner vetoed she said no bidet for you and i was like come on baby make my bidet (laughs) (laughs) well i just feel like it's respectful if you're going to get back there and do any kind of butt stuff you just really want it to be clean oh yeah so all right well um Do you think we could get through one real question? Do you think we could get through one pod without talking about genitals or butts? <laughs> it would feel wrong if we did that. No, I know. I just wonder and if we people could... would start unsubscribing because they're here for the nether regions. They're not here for the music. Yeah. Yeah, that the the Belgians show up for all the butt comments. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing on with my theme of Nashville, Tennessee, I have another band who are actually label mates with the first band I picked for Fro. Their label is Infinity Cat Recordings, and it's actually the label that these dudes started. When they were teenagers. Yeah, yeah. In 2002, they're in freaking high school, and uh, they started this label with their dad, who was actually a legendary songwriter. His name's Robert Ellis Oral. And he wrote songs for Reba McIntyre. Oh, I know who this is. He produced Taylor Swift's self-titled debut, which then sold over 6 million copies. So he kind of knew a little bit about the music industry when they they co-founded Infinity Cat. But this band is one that I didn't pick for Jeff because I've already introduced him to this band because I love it so much. And he fought me on it and eventually came around. But uh, this band is called Jeff the Brotherhood. And this track is the penultimate track off of their 2009 album, Heavy Days. And this track is called Mind Ride. (laughs) 
Remember when we went to see them in Austin, Dave? Oh, yeah. And you invited them to go float the river with us the next day? <laughs> yeah. And dude was like, man, we'd actually love to do that, but we got to get on the bus and go to New Orleans tomorrow and drop our guitar <laughs> stuff. And we're like, all right, cool, cool. And then we hung out with them for a while and drank beers and stuff. Yeah, they're cool dudes, man. They are cool dudes. Yeah, they're they're nice. So I discovered this band the first time I visited Nashville. My wife and I, we went on this cross-country road trip. And then as we circled back on our way to Texas, we stopped in Nashville because I'd been a member of the Third Man Record Club since it started. And I wanted to see Jack White's little spot over there. So we went over and I was looking around and talking to one of the guys that worked there. And I was just kind of asking what's, you know, what's the music scene like? And he's like, well, there's this club called Exit Inn. There's actually a really good show there tonight. And it was these guys opening up for another band called Screaming Females, which is a fantastic band as well. So this band came on and it was like, they blew the doors off. They were the hometown heroes and it was fantastic. I bought vinyl. I bought a poster. I was a fan. I was locked in. And then I tried to sell it to Jeff for like three years before he finally like heard a track on his serious XM radio alternative station that <laughs> teaches him everything. And then he was like, yeah, hey, you know, I actually, I, I, I finally got around to it. And those guys are pretty cool. And I was like, Guy Garvey said it was cool to listen to. So I said, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, it's not Guy Garvey. <laughs> I read this four word review of Heavy Days. That is my favorite review ever. A gloriously filthy mess. It's <laughs> 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 like, fuck yeah, dude. That's cool. That is what it is. It was a good review. Like they liked it. I gotta yeah. remember that. That's a hilarious way to say that. They did this record in 2009 and they recorded it at Studio Schmudio, which is the studio <laughs> in Nashville that Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys owns. And the lyrics to the song are pretty minimal. It's kind of like a one stanza thing that they repeat through the different tempo changes and whatnot, but it talks about this sort of psychedelic journey with the mind writer, yep. like a snake of a person, dangerous dude putting the subject into a hypnotic trance as they they lose their inhibitions on this sensual pleasure cruise, and then just punctuating the refrain with, my name is Jeff. I think it's the song of how they describe their identity as a band, and I, I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> and I love yeah. that they're named Jeff the Brotherhood, and neither one of them are named Jeff. I, I just right. love, for some reason, that really tickles me. Well, and so I picked him for you, Russ, because... We haven't heard what Russ has to say about it. You just heard what Dave's got to say about it. It's a little more <laughs> psych rock for than like what I would normally get into and de okay. desert rock, if you will. And yeah. I don't know if you guys know this or have paid much attention, but I don't really listen to a lot of music with guitar solos. <laughs> so most of my music doesn't have guitar <laughs> solos. It has <laughs> rip roaring riffs, but like not. It's like you guys aren't even friends because you don't know that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there were a lot of solos in the song and yeah. very deserty psych rock so it was cool and i'm glad and i will definitely dig into it but he's lost in the desert it's outside of my wheelhouse and it's just yeah. gonna take a bit for me to get there i think no I, I i get it i think that one of the things that i thought you would like about it is kind of their their diy aesthetic of building it themselves and dave's crying right now i can see <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm crushed. I thought what you would like about it. I do like the rawness of it, you know, and I, I like how heavy it gets at times. There is a lot to like there. Just, I, I haven't found my entry point yet, but I think once I do, then I can really kind in of- In senior year of high school, I was in the friend zone with <laughs> with one of the hottest girls in school, but we were like, we were very close. I, of course, wanted to date her, but I was in the friend zone and firmly lodged there, but- I was like convinced that if I got her to listen to music from the Vatican gift shop album of Stone Temple Pilots, that she would yeah. understand me better. She would melt into your arms. And get that I'm like edgy, but also <laughs> but also can do some of the soft stuff, you know, because that album. Yeah. Anyway, she listened to a few songs and she was just like, he sounds sexy or whatever, but I don't know. It's not really my thing. And I was like. And that double hurt because, of course, I wanted her to think I was sexy, which I was not. And Scott Weiland was sexier than me. <laughs> but I, I just didn't want to hear her compliment another person for being sexy. And she didn't like the music on top of that. <laughs> it's a double whammy. <laughs> so it was just like, ugh. Yeah, it really hurt. 
And so Russ's description of that is <laughs> is reminiscent of that <laughs> is, moment for you. It's sort of equivalent. <laughs> I don't know. What do I say here? You'll do better next time. Be better. I'll, I'll try harder. <laughs> no. I'll try yeah. harder and I will uh No, okay. I, I I'm a I'm a fickle beast. Like I, I don't Don't try to let him down easy, dude. He <laughs> he struck out. Make him walk back to the dugout. All right, so I'm batting 50%. I struck out. I hit a double. I'm cool with that. That's a pretty good average. I'm pretty cool with that. What do you guys got for me? So my shit wasn't like you guys did themes like with two pieces in Nashville and stuff. I didn't do any of that. I was just trying to do targeted precision locks. I was trying to lock in to you boys and try to get you a song that you're going to like. I did cheat a little because I asked Dave if he had ever listened to Teenage Fan Club, and he says, I know of them, but I've never listened to them, which means no. You should just say no, and that's okay, um, <laughs> which is what I wanted because I wanted to introduce you to them. Again, this is pretty common for me. We go to Glasgow, Scotland for Teenage Fan Club. We have a magisterial indie rock record that's called Bandwagon-esque from 1991 i knew of this because my dad had it on tape which is pretty wild it's got a terrible piece of cover art which is just a big old money bag on a pink background (laughs) (laughs) they have a classic slacker strumming style and then there are a couple of different changes in the song especially going into the end part that are pretty great so this is teenage fan clubs the concept This top spin magazine's 1991 end of year poll for best album beating Nirvana's Nevermind, which is. Ooh. Wow. It's high praise. Over the long run, I don't think that stood up. <laughs> but also, there's nine of them. You've got a singer, a drummer, a bassist, and six guitars. <laughs> no, there, there are five, but there have been nine over time. Do you feel a little Wilco in here? Yeah. I think Wilco is influenced by this band a little bit, but go ahead. Say what, say what you think. Well, so I think one of the things that is interesting about this song, and I'm going to showcase the holes in my music catalog. I wasn't really aware of this band. I, you know, I knew the name of them, but hadn't listened to them. And I, I thought it was a current band kind of having a timeless sound is that it could have come out this last year or it could have come out. I agree. You said 91. I was like, what? I didn't realize yeah. it was 91. That's crazy. I did dig the song. It's definitely a grower. It wasn't so much of a shower right out of the gate. Yeah. I'm intrigued to, to learn more. I did read that it's one of Julian Casablanca's favorite bands and he was real appreciative of their songwriting and guitar playing. I did not know that. So you can kind of catch their influence through the Strokes records, but um, indie pop, man, it's it's wild to see the evolution of it and, and feel like this is a song that could have come out, you know, last year. So not bad. Yeah, I feel like this is a, this is a single and I'm going to need to drive in a run to win by one point in this baseball game, but... I think it I think I might eventually drive that run in. I think you're gonna I okay. think you're gonna want to listen to Bandwagon S more. Yeah. No, that's good. That's a good pick. Good pick. I shot my shot. It's all over me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Russ. Tell me what you got. What'd you bring me? My song is called Corner Street by I Am Dynamite. And I get some kind of seventies vibes from the harmony. Uh-huh. It's groovy, it's fun, it's minimalist without sacrificing quality. This is a two-piece band made up of Christopher Martin playing guitar, not to be mistaken for the frontman of Coldplay. I know. Jeff was getting excited for a moment hearing me talk about Coldplay. <laughs> and Chris Phillips, the drummer. This is the first time I've ever heard this song. It's groovy. They formed in Ann Arbor, Michigan, but now reside in North Carolina. They have two albums out. 2012 Super Mega Fantastic, all one word, produced by Matt Noveski of Blue October, and 2015's Wasa Tusa, where the band co-produced alongside Matt Noveski. These guys are a hidden gem from the 2010s. The fact that more people don't know them is crazy to me. The music is inviting, upbeat, and fun. It puts a smile on my face whenever I hear it. Both albums were recorded in Austin. Oh, cool. The first one was at Perdinalis, and the other one was at Orb. Their name is pulled from a Nietzsche quote, which is, 
I know my fate. One day my name will be associated with the memory of something tremendous, a crisis without equal on earth, the most profound collision of conscience, a decision that was conjured up against everything that had been delivered, demanded, hallowed so far. I am no man, I am dynamite. That's pretty badass. They grew up on 80s pop and the alternative Seattle sound, which is very evident in the second album. And then uh, notice right away, wh- who were we talking about last week where it was a band that just like came out swinging? Who was it, Jeff? You were talking about them. Oh, Secret Machines. Secret Machines. Yeah, Secret Machines. That's right. Anyway, so it was not nearly as big as that, but they started touring before they had an album. And then I guess Matt Noveski saw them and said, hey, I, you should record an album. And they started opening for Sum 41, Jimmy Eat World, and even Bon Jovi. But cue the pandemic, and it derailed everything. And it isn't clear exactly where they're headed. But luckily for us, we have drummer Chris Phillips here to tell us what's next for I Am Dynamite. Chris, welcome to Six Picks Music Club. It's so it's so great to have you, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Heck yeah. So this this episode, we were picking tracks for each other where we think that this is something that the other one's going to like. And, and Russ actually picked your song for me. Okay. And it's funny because growing up as a kid, my parents, they you know made up nicknames for us that they wanted to have like a positive thing for or whatnot. So my brother's Mighty Mike and I'm Dynamite Dave. So it's nice. like, it was so funny that he's like, hey, it's funny coincidence. Yeah, you're literally, literally part of the family. That's perfect. <laughs> So I was I was a fan before you even heard the track, the Corner Street track, your new track that came out 2022. Yep. Uh, and it's great. Thanks. So Corner Street came out of we had, yeah, obviously when COVID hit, no shows, no anything. So we wrote a batch of songs um, and Corner Street's the one that survived. You know, uh, <laughs> okay. everything else was I mean, I don't want to say trash, but everything else was different. Um a lot of slower tempo stuff, which is not our forte, but like just kind of that's how everybody was. We're like, when you can't test stuff out live and see reactions for sure. us anyway, it's really hard to be like, oh, that's a banger. You know, this is more like, okay, like this feels good, but is it going to translate to any audience? You know, right. It's like a stand up comic who doesn't test out their jokes and then goes out to record a special and bombs. <laughs> yeah, I got yes, it. Yes, 100%. You have to constantly be out there pushing and you'd rather bomb at some small club or for us play some really terrible song at some small club, which we did. And then, and see, like, it just isn't going to work. So anyway, corner street came about, we pushed it to radio ourselves. So we, it got some radio play, some stations that we had to relationships with. It was recorded back in Texas at Orb Studios. Okay. That's where you did the second album as well, right? Yep. Second album uh, with Matt Noveski, who owns the co-owns that studio. And then we ended up doing that sans Matt. So it was literally the engineer, Chris and I. So we produced that thing ourselves because that came out at a time where like we weren't necessarily playing shows quite yet. It was kind of interesting to see like people's reaction that you almost like, oh man, they're back. They want to do shows and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. So then when that finally came out, we started doing shows. We'd go upstate New York. We played a big festival up there. And then in uh, August, I believe, of, of 22, my foot goes numb driving in Jersey and we're driving the trailer up and gear and, and you know, we are our little crew guy and all, we're doing this thing and my foot goes numb. I didn't say anything to anybody and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd been dealing with a little injury and I was like, oh, okay, I should probably get this checked out. So we get to the hotel. I take my shoe off. Everything's okay. I play the show. Everything's fine. Had a couple shows that summer, basically radio shows promoting Corner Street. And man, my foot's just bothering me. So I go and get it checked out. I had a bone spur. Oh no. Developed from an old injury. And that bone spur punctured my Achilles tendon. Ugh. I was following your medical journey. Oh yeah. I saw the scar that they had to scrape. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Oh dude. Yeah. What they did is they they went in, they cut, my, cut the back of my heel. They cut my Achilles up and down and then reshaped my entire heel bone. And then... Put it all back together. So I could not put any weight on it for eight to 10 weeks, right? So I was in a cast. I was in all this stuff. So clearly I was laid up and it's my right foot. Oh, your bass drum foot? Bass drum foot. I couldn't drive. I couldn't do anything. Kind of important. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. As a drummer, (laughs) did my rehab, finally was able to start playing. And as I was able to start playing and we we were going about to do a local show, my bandmate, Chris, he ended up having knee surgery. So 2023 for I Am Dynamite was a medical (laughs) wash, right? 
<laughs> so it kind of sucked because yes, we had some, we had a little bit of like momentum going with Corner Street, but we'll hit it hard in 2024. Yeah. New songs are coming. Corner Street is still on that set list, but yeah, it, it sucks that it's been taking so long, but when you can't physically play, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's not even a mental health thing with us. It was physical health. We couldn't actually do anything. So it is what it is, but that's where we're at right now. Next time you guys are out on the road and come through Austin, please hit us up. Yes, for sure. Because we would love to come see your show. We'd love to come hang out. We'd do a follow-up of this. I know, man. We we keep saying we need to get down there. We never did Wasatusa songs down there. Wow. We need to get down there and I mean, even just play stubs, man, and just yeah. go out and do it. Like that would be that would be, be rad. That'd be fun. We haven't done that in a long time. Heck yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thanks again so much. All right, guys. See you later. Okay, thanks, Chris. Have a great weekend. You too. Oh my gosh, huge thanks to Chris from I Am Dynamite for joining us today on the pod and for being our first musician guest. We're hoping to bring more bands on the pod in the future for you, listener. And Russ, it sounds like listener demands it, so you've got your marching orders. And be sure to check out the bonus episode this week, which features the full interview with Chris Phillips of I Am Dynamite. As always, the songs we talked about today are linked in a playlist in the show notes, so go on over and listen to them in their entirety. And if you know us better than we do, shoot us an email or a comment telling us which songs you'd have picked and for who. As always, thank you, listener, for joining us in the clubhouse today. We wouldn't be here with the... Well, actually, we probably would be doing this anyway, but we are really happy that you're here, so keep coming back and tell your friends. And be sure to like and subscribe to Six Picks Music Club wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss out on any of our adventures. Until next time, make sure you play it loud and keep jamming. This episode of Six Picks Music was produced by Andy Feltersnatch. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> Edited by Barry McCockiner. <laughs> Barry McCockiner. <laughs> He's also from Glasgow. That dude's from Glasgow. With special thanks, as always, to Dixie Wrecked.